couple more incentives coming up here. For the Oops All Dwarves, everyone plays a Dwarf Dragon Crown Pro. We are currently $55 out of $2,000, so if you want to see that, please get those donations for that as well. Folks, the moment you've all been waiting for. Here comes Mega Man 8 with Orza. Take it away and good luck. Hey. Yeah. Yay, awesome. Mega Man 8. Awesome. All right. It's a good video game. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm Orza, um, and I Hi. have these lovely people behind me. I'm Proto Magical Girl. Hey, I'm, I'm Chelney. <laughs> and that's Hi. a backpack. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> and then we have Stump and Fast and CC. Uh, I don't know if you can see them or not. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started then. Um, can I give a countdown? All right. Uh, let's go then in three, two, one, go. Diddy. So this is Mega Man 8. This is maybe my favorite entry in the franchise. It's really good. Um, it is a 32-bit game. It's on the PlayStation 1, um, and it does a lot of things a fair bit differently than the other Mega Man games you might be used to. One really neat thing is this game gives you two jump buttons and two shoot buttons, one of which is dedicated to the Mega Buster at all times, which is going to allow you to A, mash faster, and B, combo the Mega Buster with other weapons. Now we're getting our first special weapon here. Uh, this is basically the best weapon that's ever been made for a Mega Man game. This is the Mega Ball. Um, you can kick it at things, you can jump with it like that. Um, and we're, you're going to be using it all throughout the run to do some really, really cool stuff. And also the color scheme. It's really just about the color scheme. Yeah, it's pretty good. Backpack, what are your thoughts on the color scheme? Okay. <laughs> so this is, this is, um, this is Mr. Crab 55. <laughs> AKA, Yado, Yado Cargo. AKA Yado Cargo. Um, we're going to kick it in the face with, uh, with Mega Balls. This kill is actually pretty finicky, uh, but Orse is good at this video game, so. I'm actually really bad at this boss fight, so I was really concerned about that. I don't, is anyone good at that boss I don't fight? Think so. <laughs> I'm, I know I'm not. I'm definitely not. So this game was released for the 10th anniversary of the Mega Man franchise, and as, as such, it has an extremely involved story. They really went all out for this game. It's, I mean, I personally think it's just a like wonderful love letter to Mega Man, uh, but as a speedrunner, it's just like, oh boy, these cutscenes that I can't read, because the Japanese version is... I don't know if it's actually faster, it's not. It's but just it's better. better. Cool, and that was our intro stage. Now we're heading into our first robot master. This is Grenade Man. Grenade Man Dayo. That that means that means he's Grenade Man. That's true. Yeah. I didn't Backpack know you speak Japanese. Confirm. I don't. Oh. I just watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. There we go. Ready? Um. So in this game, you have uh, separate groups of four robot masters. Um. They're actually their own enclosed weakness wheels. So. That's not something that's super relevant to later. Anyways, for this group, we're starting with Grenade Man, uh, because all we have is the, the Buster and the Mega Ball. We're going to be using the Mega Ball a lot. And again, you can use both at the same time, because this game is amazing. Nice damage boost there. That's a nice little bit of routing. Uh, I get to see some good mashing here. Once again, you can use two buttons at once to do this, so, like, just fantastic. I really like this video game. I, I hope that's coming across. Yeah, I believe that is. Backpack, what are your thoughts on this video game? It's bad. That's rude. I don't know if I can be friends with the backpack anymore. I'm sorry. I'll just, I'll leave. I know the backpack needs to stay. Yeah. Cool, so um, pretty much every stage in this game has a mini boss. Not every, but a lot of them. A lot more than you might expect for Mega Man games. This is the Ududun Ai, um, who is very cooperative and uh, won't at all kill your runs at all whatsoever. Uh, we're going to kick Mega Balls at it after starting with a charge shot. I don't want to jinx it, so I'm just not saying anything. That was a really good pattern. Yeah. Yeah, this boss can dive under the junk whenever he feels like it, basically, which every dive wastes four to five seconds. Hey, so see this ladder? Nah. Nah. Ladders are basically just not a thing in this game because you can Mega Ball Jump essentially infinitely so long as you have room above your head. Um, 
we are ideally not going to be seeing any upward ladders. And again, Orso's really good at this game, so downward ladders are still a threat that we have to that we have to deal with. Unfortunately, you can't Mega Ball jump downwards. So this right here is the reason that we're going to Grenade Man first. Um, this Rush Bike item that I picked up saves a lot of time. It is significantly faster than the normal slide, and obviously can be used in the air while sliding cannot. Wait, so. you get the items from the mini boss? Mm -hmm. Huh. I didn't know that. Yep. Backpack, why didn't you tell me? Backpack's really busy right now, don't worry about it. So this is Grenade Man. Um, in this game, your highest damage per second with the Buster is going to be half charges, so Orsa is basically going to be laying half charges into this boss right as soon as the iframes end. The iframes are slightly longer than the half charge time. That's not true for every boss, but for most of them, half charges are the way to go. Uh, there's a couple different attacks here, and now it's time for this. Change up the battlefield a little bit. Again, this game has a lot going on, and we're done. Yeah, there is a slight little manipulation you can do with Grenade Man. Obviously, you want him to stay on the ground so you can keep him in iframes more. Um, and if you are more than halfway across the screen from him, so sort of on the opposite side of the room, he's more likely to stay on the ground and not jump. Do we have time for a little bit of community love over there? Yeah. Definitely. All right, we have $30 for Mr. Cab 55 who says, I guess Orza would be sad if I didn't grenade him with a Don't get frosty chills, though. I have no tango time. I can't even stop clowning around. There's no space for Astro, and Aqua leaves this joke all wet. So you take a cut at sword, then search for an answer so we can be an unstoppable duo. Oh, Cab. Anyways, back over to you, Orza. Thanks, Cab. Love Mr. Cab 55. I thought you said it was Mr. Crab 55. No, Mr. Crab 55 was the boss. You're thinking of Mr. Cab 55's monster. Oh, okay. So here's a tiny auto scroller. Uh, no big deal. But essentially what this is is training for this next screen, which uh, is essentially a longer auto scroller. One unfortunate thing about uh, Mega Man 8 as far as speedrunning is concerned, again, they tried to do a lot with this game, really as like a love letter to the Mega Man franchise, including sort of changing up the, I guess, like the genre in a couple places, and giving us some auto-scrollers and changing things up to so get these cool jet board segments that are pretty fun, but pretty slow. Uh, not a ton to say here at the moment. Something interesting is actually if you ignore the game's directions, it rewards you, which I'm not sure if is a great game design decision, but it's certainly a decision. Yep. Um, we're going to be... We haven't actually talked about bolts at all yet. This is one of the Mega Man games that has currency system that allows you to buy upgrade items. We're going to be taking up five bolts over the course of the first four Robot Masters so that after the, the mid-game stage, we can buy a really cool item that I'll talk about later. Um, we're going to pick up two of those bolts... I believe, in this auto-scroller. There's six easily accessible bolts um, in this first set of stages, so every runner maybe does it a little bit differently. But there's two really easy ones here. Just drop right there, and that's one of them. Got the other one a little earlier. And now we're pretty much at the end of the scroller. Yeah, we need five before um, the next set of Robot Masters, and there's six that lose zero time to pick up, so I'm going to be getting all six. No sense not going for them in case yep. you just miss one. Yeah. God, this music's so Maybe? good. Orso, what are your thoughts on the voice actor behind the jump, jump, and slide, slide? Uh, uh, that's about all I got. I'm sorry. Okay, that's good. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to do another Rush Bike segment here. Um, what's cool about Rush Bike is that Rush Bike can actually just push straight through these ice blocks. Um, it might actually be a thing to do with the way the acceleration works, but I'm not a game designer. Um, then some cool Mega Ball movement here. Well, Mega Ball jumps aren't exactly like a frame-perfect trick, uh, especially chaining them together like that right around a bunch of ladders is very much not free. Those, uh, the money jumps sliding off of edges there are actually pretty precise, um, and especially when you see Orsa just doing them over pits without even, you know, stopping to take a breath. It's certainly a show of skill for this game. Uh, now we have essentially round two of Auto Scroller. This one's both faster and also just shorter in general, so it should go by pretty quickly before we get to the boss of the stage. Dash, 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 dash,
just during the course of this, we can let Backpack talk a little bit more about um, game design theory as it applies to Mega Man 8. I don't think that's a Backpack's wheelhouse. I yeah. mean... Oh, sorry. One of the only things I would want to mention about the auto-scroller is that since you're moving at a much faster speed with the jet board, um, it actually makes the Mega Ball jump window bigger. So you can jump pretty much any time that you're falling because you're moving forward much quicker. I was going to say something dumb, so I'm glad you actually said something commentary. So this is Frostman. He is a very big, very lovable boy. Um, the way this boss fight, just like a lot of the boss fights you're going to see over the course of this run work, uh, is we're going to be using the Flash Bomb. That's Frostman's weakness. Um, what we're essentially going to be doing is alternating placing Flash Bombs, because you can have two on screen at once, so that there's always a Flash Bomb on Frostman. Super easy, super smooth. The Flash Bomb is a great weapon as a speedrunner because it has a constant damaging hitbox, and since you can chain two of them together, you can j essentially just keep dealing damage constantly until you run out. Yeah, the only kind of annoying thing about the Flash Bomb is that, as Proto said, you can have two on the screen at the same time, but they deal damage sort of every three frames, so if they're overlapped exactly, they won't hit the boss. They'll, like, be on the same frequency, which is a little bit annoying, but... It usually doesn't happen. So this is Tengu Man, um, our third robot master. Very obvious commentary. Uh, this stage has essentially the gimmick of just uh, of wind, basically. Standard, standard fair 2D platformer stuff. Uh, this stage also has a freaking gorgeous background that I think is awesome. Um, now that we have a couple weapons under our belt, you're going to start to see a lot more quick swapping from Orsa and a lot of different strats, uh, but still just a lot more Mega Ball stuff like this. Uh, once again, like with the jet board, because of the forward wind here, Mega Ball jumps are a little bit easier, and so you can just get through that screen no problem at all. And now time for more auto-scroller. So what team are you on, Arsa? Uh, team Beat. Nice. That's the Obviously. way to go. What's your opinion of Beat? Uh, he's a pretty nice bird. Yeah. yeah, at least in this game. All right. He's he's a boar. Like, he's, he's a bird and he's round. Yep. And he's a good boy. Yep. I imagine you're not a fan, Darkman. I don't hate it as much as other Mega Man 5 runners. I'll okay. say that much. Yeah, so in this section, um, you're constantly moving forward on the jet. Um, you get party balls, which will randomly assign you one out of four, depending on when you pick it up. Um, in this section, it doesn't matter at all which helper you get. Um, they don't cause additional lag, or they don't make the stage go faster or anything. So you can feel free to pick up whichever ones you want. And that's uh, part one out of two. Part two is a little bit shorter. Um, and now is where I guess like the text sort of starts to come in. Uh, we're going to be picking up Beat very specifically. Beat, ideally, if we get bad luck, um, Eddie's not a bad choice, but we want Beat uh, so that we can do a nice fast kill on the mid boss at the end of this auto scroller. Yeah, if I get bad luck, I can take some intentional damage boost to force some party ball spawns. But... There hey, go. there we go. No problem. I love the, the Kappa airship. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, Beat is by far the best helper. Um, he is essentially just a constant damage source, whereas Eddie and Otto and Rush all have projectiles to them. Um, whereas Beat, you can just sort of place him inside an enemy and watch him deal damage constantly. Yeah, as long as you're holding down uh, the buster charge, Beat's hitbox is just doing damage. So it's a really, really great utility for um, dealing with not only all these enemies, but the mid boss, as you're going to see in a second. It's really rude that you have Eddie off screen. He's just trying to do his job. Oh, sorry. You know, thank you. Thank, yeah. you. thank you for giving him the spotlight. No problem. So, yeah, well, fine. here it's for okay, a it's reason. Fine. It's fine. Yeah. Fine. Now it's for speed. <laughs> it. um, so we're just going to shove Beat inside this boss's hitbox. Um, we're going to be taking damage from the boss's body instead of from its attacks. It's a little less damage, but Horse is really good at this game, so damage shouldn't matter. Free Bolt. Mm -hmm. And uh, now coming off of the auto-scroller, which was maybe not the most exciting thing in the world, we have another one of these vertical rooms. What you're supposed to do in these rooms is 
float up slowly in a bubble and dodge around the spikes, but you can just Mega Ball if you're if you're cool and good. So that's what Orsa's gonna do, because he's cool and good. Nice. The platforming with the wind here just looks super smooth. It's really great. And taking advantage of all of our weapons just to make things easier. And now it's time for Tengu Man. So Tengu Man is one of the exceptions to our uh, buster damage per second rule. For Tengu Man, we're going to want to use a combination of Ice Wave when you can hit him and fully charged buster shots. Um, ideally, we're going to see Tengu Man doing attacks that bring him to the ground. Uh, but with careful positioning, that was cool. Um, you can actually hit Tengu Man with the Ice Wave in the air. Ooh! I never even thought to do that. Now you're just styling at this yeah. point. You know? Yeah, that Tengu Man is probably the hardest boss fight in the game, especially in the refights, whenever there's even more weapons in between Mega Ball and Ice Wave to actually take him down with. It's a lot of quick swapping. I do appreciate you showing off how good you are. Oh, thanks. And from Tengu Man, we get Tornado Hold, a really cool weapon that's going to enhance our vertical maneuvering capabilities. Um, so we're going to see a little bit of that in this stage, and then more going forward, because it's a good weapon. Pretty much all of the weapons in this game have more usage than just damage dealing. Um, you know, and then there are some like Flash Bomb that are just really good at damage dealing. So, And that, combined with all the quick swapping, means you get to see tons of weapons in this speedrun, which is awesome. Now it's time for more Rush uh, Motorcycle action. So you'll notice that Rush has a, essentially a timer over on the left side. That timer gets forced down further when you take damage, and Orso wants to keep this bike all the way until the end of this screen. Um, so he's going to be trying not to take any damage through some careful jumping, uh, but just a little is no big deal. That one's intentional. And nice little, nice little forward boost on that train, and we're into the next screen. So the main gimmick of this stage is these uh, sort of like jack-in-the-box things, I guess. Anytime that bell gets struck with the hammer, uh, whatever box Mega Man's on will activate. Um, and while that doesn't matter a ton for those first ones, we're going to see more of that later. What is this boss's name? Uh, Sissy Roll. I can never remember that one for some reason. Uh, but we're just going to kick it with Mega Balls. Uh, because this boss is moving all over the place horizontally and vertically, it's actually not particularly easy to keep Mega Ball on the boss at all times. Combine that with all of the other enemies flying around, but once again, Orsa makes it look easy. And so now back to this. Um, I think this screen is where we're going to start to see a lot more intentional positioning when it comes to this, uh, these jack-in-the-box cycles so that, just like that, you end up on the one that's good, that, you know, doesn't slow you down. It's a really slow elevator. It is. I need to fix that. Yeah. I wish Capcom would patch it. Yeah. One day. Yeah. So here's where Tornado Hold is going to start to come in. It's really great. You can combo it with a Mega Ball. You Mega Ball jump up and skip ladders twice as fast, which is just awesome. And now here's the fun screen. Orso makes that look way too easy. You should probably clap for that. But sure. That's good. I'll clap. Really, backpack? So Clownman is probably one of, if not my favorite fights um, in this uh, in this game. It's just an extremely dynamic fight, swapping between different weapons, moving between different strats. It's important to note that you don't want to hit. Um, there's a little bit of randomness. You don't want to hit Thunder. You don't want to hit Clown Man with the tornado hold in the middle of the swinging attack, because um, then he'll go into like a stun state where he takes less damage. You don't want to see Thunder. Wow. Wow. I would say Clown Man really liked clowning around that. Yeah, yeah, I would too. He was clowning around, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, and that's four Robot Masters. Uh, now moving on, we're going to head to the mid-game stage and skip a bunch of lore and do a cool boss fight.
Uh, yeah, cool. That's a word for it. Yeah. The stage has good music, though, so... No, the, the boss fight, specifically. Yeah. I mean, this song is good. But the boss fight song is just awesome. So once again, more precise weapon usage here. Uh, we cannot skip downward ladders, unfortunately, but some good movement from Orsa there to not take damage from those Mets. And now it's time for Duo. So, uh, Duo can... He can punch, and he can meteor. And we don't want him to meet... Yeah. You have to say something. Yeah. Uh, so essentially the strat here is going to be similar to what we were doing for Frostman, but combining with uh, fully charged Buster shots. Anytime Duo does this unfortunate and slow attack, we want to charge Buster during it uh, to get a little bit of extra damage in. Not the best luck, but we got through it. Orza did it with style. Proto Man's here. Uh, once again, I cannot read Japanese, so... Something's going on. I think Wily's Fortress is over there, but then there's some, like, shields, which is why we're going to fight more Robot Masters. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Do you think Google Translate would work with this game? I mean, it, they have, like, the thing now where you can just, like, point a camera at text, oh and it'll just, like, translate. So, yeah, you could totally just experience Mega Man 8. That hey, we're just, uh, we just bought the, the Hyper Slider. No, I'm really curious. I want to see if this is possible. <laughs> Very important. Oh boy. Um, so, we just bought the Hyper Slider. As the name implies, it makes us slide faster. Uh, just watch watch and learn here. It makes you slide a lot faster. It is like, even if we had to go out of the way for the bolts, and we have to go out of the way for the shopping, it's super worth it. Look at this boy go. Freaking light speed over here. Um, so Astro Man stage is the disappearing block stage in this game. Um, as you might expect, there's just a lot of precise cycles here, dodging, ducking, and weaving around enemies um, in order to precisely line up Mega Ball jumps to get on these cycles. Then we have these infinite looping maze segments, uh, which, if you're good at video games... Orza's good at video games. Uh, that saves a bunch of time. Yeah, that skip saves about five seconds if you set it up. Um, you saw I put the switch down and sent it back up one time. Uh, that actually makes it not impossible. Uh, it's like, what, a seven frame trick if you set it up like yes. that? So that's not that's not particularly I think, easy. I think it's five or six, but it's frame perfect if you don't. So Something like that. Yeah. Another short little auto-scroller here, but yeah, that trick is... That trick's something. Ours is good at video games. This song is good. It is. It's comfy. It's real comfy. So, um, in this next section, do you want to talk maybe a bit about why we choose Astro first instead of, say, Swordman? Um, I'm not sure if okay. I super know, sure. so why don't you go for it? Yeah, I'll do it. Hang on one second. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about with the first screen. This stage gets real tricky. Okay, so um, we actually used to do Swordman first, like five or six years ago. Um, as Proto mentioned earlier, the... Uh, excuse me. The bosses have sort of their own weakness cycles, so I don't actually have any hard weaknesses right now. However, to offset this, the developers added soft weaknesses to two out of the four bosses. Um, Astro Man takes two damage from Flash Bomb, and Sword Man takes two damage from Ice Wave. Um, however, it's a lot less awkward to hit Astro Man with Flash Bomb than Sword Man with Ice Wave. So, and the potential time loss is a lot worse in Sword First than Astro First. Yeah, orso has been running this game for a really, really long time and has been around for a lot of these, uh, like, routing decisions. So this is Astro Man. This is probably my other favorite fight. Um, this one, it's just a lot of fun when it goes well. Even though there is some luck involved, you get to just throw weapons around. We're going to be comboing Mega Ball and Flash Bomb to constantly keep damage on Astro Man. This is a good pattern. This is what we want to see. It's really convenient that Flash Bomb and Mega Ball are right next to each other because they work so well together. But I mean, I guess that's what you get with, you know, orbs. Oh, we couldn't quite get the kill in time. 
That's okay. That was a good fight. Yeah, one one Astro Crush is not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, and the rest of the fight was really, really smooth. Do we have time for a quick donation? Yeah, definitely. We have $75 from Proto Man, who says, Hey, y'all. Enjoy my first time being a Calithon. Everyone go donate to Kingdom Hearts Split Showcase. Still have a ways to go. That is $345 out of 1500 And I got a quick question while I'm here. Uh, what is Backpack's favorite Mega Man game? I'm sorry, the game audio is kind of loud. Can you repeat that? What is Backpack's favorite Mega Man game? Backpack says Mega Man 6. That's a good choice. Yeah, so from here, we're at the point where we have a hard weakness again, so we can just jump right back on the weakness train. Mega Man can swim now. This is like the most bizarre thing I've seen in any classic Mega Man game. <laughs> it's a little odd, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but this stage is pretty cool, because water physics combined with tons and tons of weapons. Oh, that Mega Ball jump is slick, dang. This game, because you can quick swap weapons and because you can co combo weapons together, you just have so many small strats. You never see two runners play this game in the same way, and no matter what you do, it always just looks super cool. Once again, just no ladders. Um, uh, blanking on this boss's name. Uh, Gorone. Oh yeah, it's Gorone. Um, this boss is a jerk. Uh, this boss doesn't have a particular weakness, as I recall. You need to give it. You need to hit it roughly like ten times with pretty much anything. Yep. Uh, conveniently, you have weapons that can hit above you, below you, and to both sides of you. No, ma no problem. Um, however, this pattern is random, and you, even without that, was kind of a rough kill timing because um, the waterfall cycles. So if you kill the boss at the top of the waterfall cycle, you then have to fall all the way down to finish the fight. One thing I didn't get a chance to mention in uh, Grenade Man stage is you can actually force these uh, timer bombs to count down, which is really cool. That's not something you can do in literally any other Mega Man game as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, for sections like that, it allows you to speed things up just a little. Some nice damage boosting here. Um, also, picking up that health was a very smart decision, because you want to be doing a lot of damage boosting. And while this fight is not particularly scary, it's not worth taking the risk. Um, so, this is Aquaman. Um, you can call him Handsome Guy. Um, what we're going to basically be doing is alternating a fully charged shot with an Astro Crush. Uh, the four Astro Crushes alone is not enough to kill Aquaman. I mean, basically our goal is to just stay on top of the iframes here. Uh, you want to be careful with how you time your Astro Crushes, because the damage does not start right when you press the button, so you can preempt it a little bit, but not too much, or you lose out on some of the damage. Can I just say how much I appreciate Aquaman's style? Just, like, writing your name in a rainbow? Like, that's legit. It's, it's yeah? goals. It's majorly goals. <laughs> And now we have water balloons. That's just that's just the weapon. It's just water balloons. But I mean, like that seems silly, but like they're robots, so you know, throwing water at them is actually probably pretty smart. Yeah, most people sleep on water balloon, but it's actually like a somewhat useful attack. Um, you have a lot of ammo with it, and there is no shot limit on it, so you can have as many of them on screen as you can, basically as fast as you can mash. Yeah. What's really cool, uh, like we mentioned earlier about how you can buster and weapon at the same time in this game, the task of this game takes advantage of that to alternate buster shots and water balloons at 60 hertz, and it's really, really cool. So this is Swordman stage. This is my favorite stage in the game from a design standpoint. Uh, what this stage starts with is essentially these four puzzle rooms where the game forces you to essentially learn how to use the four weapons that you have from the last set of Robot Masters. So the Thunder Claw can be used to push these switches, and it has, uh, it's basically a grappling hook, which is freaking awesome. Um, that was really smooth. What's really interesting about the, grap the uh, Thunder Claw is that when it's coming back to Mega Man, it actually does damage every frame. Uh, so Ors is going to be taking advantage of that when using the Thunder Claw. This is the Tornado Hold Room. This is maybe my least favorite one because I'm bad at it. Um, you have to use the Tornado Hold to push these things up. Um, this one is particularly tough, because if you're not careful, it can bonk against those stairs and get sent backwards. 
Also, make sure to hit the switch at the end of every room, or else you just have to do the entire thing again. So this is the flash bomb room. Uh, we're going to use the flash bomb to light up the background. So that's blue, then red, and the third one there by, uh, by process of elimination is yellow. Uh, and then the game tests your memory here. Um, these patterns are completely random. Gotta be honest, it took me like maybe a, two weeks of Mega Man 8 speedrunning to realize that was a thing, which finally explained why I could just never seem to memorize the pattern. Uh, this is the ice wave room. Um, you use ice to freeze fire. The Ice Wave is honestly a really cool and extremely powerful weapon. Nice little damage boost there to save some time. Unfortunately, the Ice Wave is kind of slow compared to the Hyper Slider. And that, you can despawn the last uh, pair of teeth there. And now we're into the mini boss. Uh, this is Gierna, so named for the uh, the gears. Uh, Orso's gonna do this fight really fast. I'm gonna try. I'm not having much success. I believe. Okay, hey, there fine. you go. Yeah. That's what you want to see. So that's essentially saving, I guess, like a cycle on that boss. Yeah. If you went on a little any longer, a hammerhead enemy guy would come out and break the platform Mega Man was standing on, and it's slow. You'll see those enemies in a second so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Shoutouts to the Mega Ball. One of those things. Uh, but yeah, we didn't have to see that because Orso's good at video games. It's nice one aisle slides here. That's exactly as hard as it looks. It is, yeah. Normally with the money jump there, you have uh, eight frames to press the ball jump input. Um, but with that one, if you wait the full eight frames, you're going to die in the lava. So it's a little bit of a reduced frame window. And that's Swordman stage. Uh, so now here's Swordman himself, uh, the one and only sentient picture frame of the Mega Man universe. Thanks, Brian David Gilbert, for that one. Um, Swordman's weak to the water balloon, because fire, water, yeah, um, unfortunately Swordman's pattern, ooh, nice, good pattern right off the bat. Swordman is a little bit random, but, uh, once Swordman's set up in a s specific way, we can stand back here behind Swordman, which prevents Swordman from doing the bad pattern. Uh, all it really just takes is doing a bunch of damage boosting, but Orso's good at video games, so hey, that's no problem. Yeah, you want him to be against the wall and sort of behind him, because then he has no sort of horizontal distance to spin, so he just won't. Yeah, he can do an attack where he spins his sword across the room, and it's really slow, and he's invulnerable during it, so doing that minute allows you to not see it, which is good, because fast. Backpack? Well said. I'm really glad we recruited the backpack for commentary. It's a good it, call. It's a good addition. I never would have thought of some of these points, honestly, and I have, like, hundreds of runs in this game. And now our final robot master, uh, Search Man. This stage really cool. Um, we're going to be kicking it off with some Rush Bike, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yeah. This I was is like, is that the second section? Yeah, unfortunately, this is the last Rush Bike. Rush Bike is really cool, and there's a couple other times in the run where it's almost faster, but the menu time just takes so long that it's not worth it. Yeah. Which it's only because it's cool. It's only faster because um, it maintains your slide speed in the air. So you need to have this section where you have to do a lot of jumping for it to save time. Neat. And so the second section of this stage is going to be mostly Ice Wave. The gimmick here is these sort of gates that you have to shoot before you uh, can move through them. Tornado Hold Mega Ball. Tornado Hold Mega Ball. Easy. That is also as hard as it looks. Um, and also as scary as it looks. Or so you're scaring me. <laughs> Those uh, stompy, uh, pointy boys there, that's their official name, um, are one of the only enemies that isn't killed by one ice wave. Uh, so we kind of have to route carefully through those sections that have them in order to kill them quickly. So this is Search Man. Uh, hopefully we won't have to search for him. We'll see. 
Uh, this boss has a couple different attacks and is random. Hey, there we go. Uh, what's really convenient, uh, the which bush Swordman, Sir, Searchman is in is random, but with Swordman's weapon, you can hit two of them at once, thus saving yourself a little bit of time, potentially. And that's that. Swordman has a cool design. It's a weird concept to me. I figured Searchman would be searching for us, not the other way around. I mean, he does fire homing missiles, so I think it's sort of a two-way okay, street. I mean, he's great. search, man. That's what he's all about. So, you know, search, be searched. I can appreciate that aesthetic. And that's eight Robot Masters, so now it's time to move on. In this game, there's just four Wily stages, although they do get pretty long by the end, Wily 3 especially. Uh, but we're going to start with Wily 1. Um, a lot of the stuff in the Wily stages is sort of like, hey, I hope you were paying attention and playing well in the Robot Master stages, because now you're going to do this again, but harder. Um, and they kick that off literally right out of the gate in Wily 1 with an auto-scroller. Hey, listen, Orsa, I'd really hate it if you happen to die here. I really don't want you to die. Okay. Dying is never a good thing to do. So. I'll keep that in mind. Right, Thanks, Darcy. Right. Enjoy this good music, because this auto-scroller is actually kind of terrifying. The homing missile strats, dang. <laughs> yeah, These this auto scroller this... optimizations. Yep. This game is very different from the 8-bit games in that it does refill your weapons between Wily stages, so you can use pretty much whatever you want throughout these stages. Yeah. Mega Man 8 had a lot of those really awesome and sorely needed quality of life changes for the series, and then 9 got rid of them, but oh well. So that's the end of our auto-scroller. That one goes by pretty quickly because it goes pretty quickly. Um, some good movement in this section with all these tiny platforms and bottomless pits. Once again, as scary as it looks. Uh, using some Mega Ball, using some Thunder Claw. Uh, again, taking advantage of the fact that the Thunder Claw does damage every frame when you hit on the rebound. And now it's time for maybe my favorite Wily Castle boss. My favorite Wily Castle boss besides Square Machine. This is a Ted Amino, uh, which is the um, basically the Mega Ball gimmick boss. Ideally, we're going to get an early hit in right here. There you go. Um, so fun fact about the Mega Ball, you can actually kick it up at a, like, a higher 60 degree angle if you hold up on the D-pad when you kick it. Uh, essentially the way Orso is going to be doing this fight is we want to hit not just a Ted Amino proper, but every single column every turn so that we can start the next round faster. Yeah, there is still a bit of randomness with the spawns. Oh probably play the game and not talk. Um, there is a little bit of randomness with how long the spawns take that I don't really understand, and I don't think really anyone understands it, except maybe the Tasser. Maybe it's random. Maybe. I don't know if that's all I got. Maybe. Could be. Shoutouts to Timpanies. So this is Wily 2. Um, the beginning of this stage is going to be just a lot of... It's a fairly heavily vertical section. Uh, so this just means a lot of Mega Ball and absolutely no ladders, ideally. So smooth. Oh, that backwards damage boost there. Very nice. And now here's our second uh, auto-scroller exam. Uh, this is essentially the Tengu scroller, but harder. I, I would like to echo Darkman's sentiment that uh, yeah. it would be really bad if you died here. This one's pretty hard. I hope I don't take too much damage. Yeah. yeah no, no. It would be a bad idea if you died. Yo, dude, you gotta be careful. Yeah, sorry. I'll try to be more careful. Do those monsters just throw the maple leaf? Maybe. Okay. They're, they're kunais. Okay. That's fair. Kinda looks like the maple leaf, though. You're not wrong.
You're getting kind of low. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, you really should be. You got to be careful here. Mm -hmm. You don't want to die and have to do this whole thing again. Yeah, that like, would really suck. Oh, dear. That's it happens. Okay, now you're actually scaring me. I'm gonna take advantage of homing missile for this section. It's not faster, but it it just easier and uh, offers some nice peace of mind because those bats are annoying. Or so, please don't die. Dang it, dude! Yeah, so obviously this is intentional. Um, yeah. Dying dying at that exact point when the Klein spawns uh, warps you forward approximately 11 seconds into the stage. So skips Time a little travel. bit of the auto-scroller. So this is... Um, the I'm worst thing in existence. Yeah, that. I'm blanking on the name. Blanking. I'm blanking on the name. <laughs> God, I'm totally intentional. Um... So this boss has four different patterns it can do, and for each one you essentially have a different sort of response and a different total amount of damage that you get to do. This is what you want to see every time. Uh, Blaking can choose to just open the legs, and that's bad, but we didn't see that. That was a pretty good pattern. Yeah, that's the perfect pattern. You uh, just have a really good success rate with this fight, don't I you? I know. Yeah. A little bit of love from the community as well uh, regarding that boss. Uh, $10 from um, Peapot that, that says, Good luck, Orza. Please be nice, Blaking. Thanks, Papat. We love Papat. He's all right. So here's Wily 3. Uh, this stage is basically just a gauntlet. It's extremely long. It's full of all sorts of different stuff. It has two boss fights. Um, and if you game over here, there's no mid-game checkpoint. You go all the way back to the beginning of the stage. That's not going to be relevant for Orsa, because once again, good at video games. Um, in the meantime, some super slick Mega Ball movement. And just trying to make this section just go... Ah. Ah. Yeah, like I said, the stage is hard. All right, let's try that again. So, just watch here. Pay attention to how many times Orsa is switching weapons at pretty much any given time during this stage. Especially during the more horizontal sections that aren't dominated by Mega Ball. Um, it's a lot. This game is all about using every weapon you have to the best of your ability. Which makes it a really, really cool speedrun. Kind of death, you get full energy back. Yep. Nice. Quality of life. So here's base. Um, base is gonna fuse with treble and some of the evil energy from the the, the lore. It's called the evil energy. Don't worry about it. Uh, to have basically an upgraded form of his super suit from Mega Man Seven, um, and then we fight him naturally because all base ever does is want to fight Mega Man sort of his whole, his whole dealio. Um, what's important to note with this fight, really, is that we want to be careful about where we finish the fight. Uh, at the end of this fight, when base hits one damage, not zero, because base can never die. He's, he's, he's the rival character, not really an antagonist. Um, whenever base uh, hits one health, he's going to move very, very slowly to the right and down to hit a specific spot on the screen and stop there. Uh, so we want to be careful about where we finish the fight. Or we can do that. That's not ideal, but... It's not the end of the world. Sometimes you have to take a uh, poor positioning in order to just finish the fight. It's not worth waiting all day for. Um, and now it's sort of the back half of the stage, just keeping up a lot of the same really high difficulty, frankly. The stage is a lot. Uh, luckily, it's not super long. The first half is really most of the stage. The section is absolutely terrifying. And it wouldn't be a Mega Man game without the Yellow Devil, so here's the Jello Devil. It's a good name. Thank you, I didn't make it myself. Could have taken credit, you know. I mean, I could have, but like when when we have the original creator right here on the couch, like, that would be rude. That's fair. So this is the Jello Devil. Um, what we're basically going to be doing is opening up the Devil with a uh, Flash Bomb, then hitting it with four... Um, Four Thunderclaws, then standing in a specific pixel of the screen in order to manipulate the boss to give us um, basically another straight-up spawn. It doesn't always work, unfortunately. Sometimes, yeah. 
Um, it is kind of important to note with this boss that it will only take up to four Thunderclaws worth of damage in a phase, which is sort of weird, but I guess the game just doesn't expect you to be good. But four is enough to kill it in two cycles no matter what, so... Easy. Sound effect of you hitting the, the jello is really great. It is, it's yeah. Like, it's satisfying. Here. Shout outs to sound design. And uh, now the run is starting to come to a close here. This is Wily 4, our final stage. Um, we have just a little bit of a stage here, and then we move into our refights. No, we just go right into yep, the refights. No stage. There's a lot of Mega Man games. <laughs> and I've played most of them for a fair amount of time. But yeah, we just move right into our refights here. Um, so some of these battles are going to be a little bit different than before. This one is not one of those. Um, another neat little thing to note is that the, the capsules are grouped in little uh, sets of four. They are laid out in the same way as the uh, boss select screen. So if you're ever not sure where you should go next, well, hey. Uh, you, can just, you can just remember the, the boss screens. Um, so because we have um, because we have quick weapon swapping, we don't need to concern ourselves with menuing and how we route this boss capsule room. So we're going to be doing our routing entirely based on moving from capsule to capsule as fast as possible. Uh, this is another fight that's going to be essentially the same. Yeah, really the only thing that determines it is which one you want to start with out of the four. I start with sword just because I have to damage boost, so I want to be full health for that. And then same with starting with Tengu on the other side. The Japanese voice acting in this game is actually really good. The US the US version not so much, but the Japanese voice acting, they they really they put a lot into this game, as I've said a couple times. Um they really wanted to put on a show for year 10 of Mega Man. Uh, this fight's al also going to be the same. Hopefully we'll get a better pattern compared to last time. So far so good, but I mean, why did I open my mouth? That's not bad. One bush is okay. It's like a second or so. Yeah. One's not too bad, but ideally you'd get zero, but I mean, luck is luck is luck. So this is uh, this is going to be our first different fight. Now we actually have Astro Man's weakness, the uh, search, the search missile, um, homing missile. I think is its homing name. sniper. Homing sniper. It's been a little while since I ran yeah. this game, which is unfortunate. I really need to play this game. So this is one of those boss fights where Capcom did a really great job, sort of lining up um, the way the weapon works with the way the boss works. But we're just going to ignore that and do this. Astro Man gets tired of saying the same thing over and over. Do you think we get tired of saying the, playing the same games over and over? Yes. <laughs> Alright, this fight's essentially the same. The only thing is I have to do three quick swaps between Ball and Ice Wave now instead of just two. So it's a little bit harder. <laughs> Easy. So here's Clown Man again. Uh, same deal, hopefully with better luck this time. <laughs> Please. Uh, so, going above Clown Man um, after hitting with the, the Tornado Hold is actually a manipulation. It makes getting uh, Thunder Carnival slightly less, but not unlikely. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do to fully mitigate the randomness of some of these boss fights. Yeah, it seems to help. It also makes it easy to hit him if he decides to do his trapeze attack next, because you're sort of aligned with him horizontally. Uh, here's a different fight, um, more or less the same thing in terms of execution, except Thunderclaw does three damage and it can knock the flash bombs back, and if you line your fight up well and get good luck, you can skip ever actually having to do the, um, um, Crazy Destroyer and switching to the second phase. 
which saves some time. Because speed running. I'll just let uh, Backpack narrate some of the deeper intricacies of the Frostman fight while this happens. Alright. Thanks, Backpack. And that's the end of our refights. Here comes a nice uh, little bit of swag Mega Ball shooting here. Just fire it from right over there. You get that full health refill. That thing refills all of your weapons. So now we've got, we are full up to face Wily himself. Uh, here's some lore. Wily, ever the genius, traps Mega Man in a shield. And then, uh, yeah. Didn't have another shield ready, I guess, which is uh, unfortunate for him, but also Proto Man's here. I guess Duo Duo used all his power to, to fight Wily, and Proto Man took him away to go get repairs with Dr. Light, and so now we have to do all the work as usual. Um, so the first phase of this fight, uh, Wily has two weaknesses, Flame Sword and Water Balloon. Um, we're going to be using Flame Sword because it has a wider hitbox and is just generally easy to maneuver with. Um, depending on what attacks Wily does, we're also going to be using some of the Astro Crush, again, just making things easy for ourselves. Oh my god, this freaking music is so good. Uh, you can stop Wily's little laser cannon by, um, destroying it. Easy. So yeah. that's phase one. Uh, phase two is your standard Wily capsule. Uh, but thanks to the power of the Mega Ball and quick weapon swapping, there's essentially no capsule pattern that really loses time. Uh, so just watch, watch Orsa fly here. Time's going to be coming up in a bit. Yeah, the only thing that's a little bit scary is it's a very long fight. You have to hit um, Wily Capsule with 20 flash bombs in order to beat him. Um, and if you're not so good at dodging some of these attacks, it can get really scary near the end. Yeah. Last one hit more here. hit, and time. 51-53. What the death? Yeah, that was a really good run. Pretty really good, good run. Dude. That is a time that most people would be overjoyed to have as a PB with this game. Orsa's really good at this game. Yeah. Yeah, this game's really cool. Um, it's one of my favorite classic Mega Man games, one of my favorite classic Mega Man speedruns, and... More people should play it, because the leaderboard is really sparse nowadays. Yes, please. Hey, Orsa, can we end the run with some electrical communication? Uh, sh sure. <gasps> that should bring it up, right? Yeah, there we go. Awesome. This, is ex this music is exclusive to the JP version, and it's a, it's a jam. All right, but yeah, thanks everybody. Mega Man 11's next, so stick around. It's going to be really fun. <laughs>